Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, everybody, and welcome to a yet another episode of the longest-running live electronics show on the Internet, Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada. With me is Mr. Lady Ada, broadcasting live from downtown Manhattan in the Adafruit factory, which you can see here behind us, which is where we do all the manufacturing, testing, shipping, support, coding, uh, videoing, blogging that you all know and love, all the components that fill your heart with joy when you receive them and fill your heart with envy when you see them on the new products list and you don't have them yet. And uh, we've got an exciting show for you tonight with all sorts of good stuff and news and crystals and, and features and videos and uh, we're excited to be here for the next hour kicking off. We'll even give away something at the end. What's on tonight's show, Mr. Lady Ada? On tonight's show, the code is crystals. 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up till 11.59 p.m. That gives you 10% off everything except for Adabox and gift certificates. It supports us. As Lady Ada said, the longest running open source electronic live show. And, of course, we make electronics here in the USA. When you buy something, it supports us and paying salaries and all that stuff. If you want to tell people around the world, show and sharing the projects, Lady Ada will go over this. Packed mailbag will stop by. We'll read some of your emails and letters to us and more. Some Python on hardware, lots of stuff going on this week. Time travel, some current news in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more. Help Wanted, that's our jobs board. Um, you can post up your skills or you can find that dream job that you've always been looking for. Main New York City, some factory footage from around the Adafruit factory and more. 3D printing, no Pedro, have a new video and a sped up video, we'll watch those. New products, got a lot this week. We got some top secret, we'll answer your questions. We do that on Discord. It's adafruit.it slash discord. Answer. You'll answer a trivia question at the end of the show. That's correct. All that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Yes. Jam-packed. All right. So uh, let's pay some bills. Um, yeah. Don't forget, codes crystal. Crystals. And uh, Lady Ada, people can I get love free crystals. stuff. Yeah, that's if right. If they purchase, in addition to the 10% off, um, when you add stuff in your cart, you can get... One or all these things. I'll tell you all about them. When yeah. you order a $99 or more, you get a free promo code or half size breadboard. That's that like white rectangular thing over there. It's about the same size and shape as a solderless half size breadboard. So when you're done with your project, you can move it over, solder it in, and make it permanent. That's the promo proto. Very handy to have. People use them in their projects all the time. If you order $149 or more, you get one of these lovely PCB coasters designed by uh, SAR at Boldport. These coasters are made from uh, thick circuit, uh, circuit board material and feature Adabot with Connie, um, Hans, the LEDs, or Minerva. Um, you get one with each order, so you can order four times and you get one of each coaster. Um, there, we're running low on these, so uh, this won't be running for much longer. If you want to get one of these coasters, uh, you'll want to place your order this week because we'll probably be out and then we'll maybe give away something different or maybe something not at all. And then uh, $199, or more, $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping. That's a UPS truck over there. That's trackable, high quality shipping. You'll know when it gets there and it'll appear when the tracking number says it's going to appear and it doesn't like disappear for two weeks. Uh, we love UPS Ground and the content of the United States. You'll get free shipping. And then um, 2 dollars or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express. It's our premier learning board, uh, which features in so many of our guides and projects. It can run uh, Circuit Python. It can run Make Code. It can run Code.org CS Discoveries. It can run uh, Microblocks. Um, or you can use it with Arduino. It's got sensors and LEDs and capacitive touch pads, and it's great for all sorts of projects. Even features in our new Cartoon Network partnership, which we'll chat about some more. And uh, all those things free when you order stuff. So order stuff, get 10% off, and we'll even give you some more stuff. How can you say no to that? Okay. And as Lady Ada said, we do have some shipping up in UPS Ground. It's the best one to use for the U.S. Postal if you're willing to wait a little bit. There's sometimes delays in the tracking doesn't always get updated. Um, DHL, that's international, use that one for sure for international orders. Same day shipping, if you're in Manhattan, check out before 11 a.m. And if your zip code's supported, you can get it same day. A little bit of a reminder, Monday is a federal holiday. It is a paid day off here at Adafruit. Um, a lot of manufacturing companies um, don't give a paid day off for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. A lot of companies don't. Um, we have, we think it's an important, it's a very American holiday. So um, 
we'll be celebrating that. Some people are doing um, it's uh, MLK Day of Service. Um, some folks are just taking the day off, um, but it is a good day to reflect about maybe some of the things that we can do together to make the world a better place. My suggestion for people who work at companies and organizations, um, we did paid day off for voting. Um, we've done uh, paid day off for charity, and we also have uh, holidays like Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, ask your employer to say, hey, what would it take for this to be a day off? I think that's been a good approach for yeah. um, giving advice to people. Um, if you run a um, maker company or electronic company, got no excuse. If you're running it, you get to do this. Um, well, we, I got to make the decisions. So you, we yeah, made the decision a couple makes years ago. Good decisions. And at the time, you know, Apple wasn't giving that day they off. They weren't. They weren't. And that was one. I, there was an article about it where Apple has this big thing like think different, and they use they use his image in their advertising. Yeah, and it's like, well, you know, is that is that an option for the people who, who celebrate that day? Or it's a federal. It's a recognized holiday, um, so I think it's a good idea um, as these things come up. Um, paid day off for voting, I think, in New York they're thinking about making it yeah. um, a, a, a day, and then uh, we did uh, paid days off for charities. So anyways, those are things um, that we're doing, and um, just like our code and our hardware designs, you know, we want people to copy and share um, also the type of things that we do for employees um, and our team members. We want people to copy yeah, and share Yeah, not, not just our code and square yeah. circuit layouts. Okay. Copy our, our decisions on employment matters too. Speaking of sharing, people around the world showing and sharing their projects. We had some amazing projects this week. Lady Ada. I'd love to talk about them. All right, we had a couple people from Adafruit come by. It's getting this year starting off, so we're getting some people coming back from vacation. We had Mike B with an IBM PC 5150, the original IBM PC. Uh, with a CGA monitor and it comes with a hard drive. So this was like really kitted out. It's got a big monitor and a big keyboard. Um, it's nice and heavy. Um, definitely not going to get stolen. Um, definitely not a portable. Uh, and he picked it up at a local, local thrift shop for a couple bucks and is, you know, he got it up and running. So maybe he'll play some games or I don't actually know what you would do with an IBM PC 5150. And also Mike B wrote a lovely 10 minute starter guide for the Grand Central. How to just plug in um a, uh, a a button pad and then have it play audio clips so the grand central can now um, make tra train sounds which is what he was doing on the show known pedro showed off their time tracking cube that's this week's project we'll show a video of that and they demoed it live it looks really cool and they just twisted and turned it and you can change colors and you can see the icons um jp showed off some of last week's projects which was the xbox adaptive controller he um, showed how to uh, connect the buttons and potentiometers to um, the XAC, and um, that was last week's guys. So we just kind of followed up on that and, and talked about it a little bit, and then also showed off a teaser for next week's, this week's project, which was a Grand Central with potentiom uh, potentiometers attached on it. Um, he's got 16 analog inputs on the Grand Central, so he soldered together um, a mega shield for uh, demoing it, maybe have some MIDI data coming out of it. Um, then from the community, we had Bill Binko, who uh, wanted to give us a hug report for our CircuitPython WS2801 library. I don't know if you know, Phil, but we have over 125 different libraries yeah. for the Raspberry Pi, Linux, yeah. and um, Feathers, and, and CircuitPython boards. Um, and that library, you know, works, it works around Raspberry Pi, so he was able to get a big donation of pixels running. And he also wanted to give a shout out to, uh, in a week or two, I guess, there's the Magic Wheelchair Reveal. Um, so every year there's a, a amazing wheelchair that's decked out and customized by all sorts of makers at, at AITA, ATIA. And uh, this year, without revealing what it is, it, it seemed to imply that maybe there's a lot of LEDs on this one. So that could be really cool, maybe a disco chair. And also, um, he also made a board that uh, works with the XAC. Uh, he used, it looked like an itsy bitsy with a BNO055. Um, which is a um, uh, orientation center and wired into the XAC so as he turned his head the view in Minecraft followed along with it and it works really well so uh, it's a very advanced technology to follow people's view but now with tilting your head you can control something on your screen which is pretty neat cool and it works with the adaptive controller um, and then Melissa came by uh, she's working on writing a driver for circuit Python for the RA 8875 this is a large uh, display controller with built-in video RAM that has hardware accelerated um, graphics and so she got some circles and ovals and lines and squares and uh, colors uh, fills going there it looked pretty neat 
um, and she's getting the hang of it, and hopefully that'll be in the bundle soon. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get an As Seen on the Show and Tell sticker, email support at adafruit.com. And don't forget, we do this every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Show and share your projects with the world. Yep. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows tomorrow, Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, JP will be showing some of the things he talked about on the show and tell, but we also have a little bit of video. This is the um, Xbox controller assistive technology project we did. So right. let's, uh, let's check it out. Check it out. Okay, back to mailbag. These are the emails and more that we read to our entire team here every week at our meeting called State of the Fruit. We also read them to you. This one's a, this is a big one. I literally owe my life to Adafruit as a vet of over 30 years. A variety of PTSD has not been good to me. The last past five years in retirement, mindless challenges and no way to apply positive thinking seem to be a big drag downward. Then I found Adafruit. I bought some of your breakout components and trinkets and other things to stimulate imagination and creativity. For the past two to three weeks, I've been glued to your website, my breadboard and sketches. I go to sleep thinking about your products and I wake up enthusiastic and positive about what's in store for the day. Uh, of day of DIY projects at age 67 now. Time is compressed, but every day is a good Adafruit day. Thank you so much. I wish I met you all sooner. Your work is nothing short of miraculous. All the best, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Can't guarantee that'll work for everyone, but glad it's working for you. Yeah, thank you so much for that's so that cool. Yeah. He's like, he's like, I, you know, instead of just sitting around and, and maybe feeling sad and and being in pain, he's Making like, a, just make something and yeah. and you can. Be inspired, and yeah, once you start building and making every day, you just look forward to what you can build and make the next day. Yep. Make it better. Everyone makes something, or can. Adafruit IT, that is where we do our Discord in, adafruit.it adafruit slash Discord, slash Discord. is where Go join. we chat. Yeah, we How answer many people questions. do we have? Um, well, we'll get to that soon. We have okay. a lot now. Um, Ooh, join lot. the community there. Sign up now. It's free. Um, some make code. Uh, stuff before I play the make code minute um, just a reminder if you go to create with cn.com and go to make code.adafruit.com right now you can see some cool Cartoon Network stuff this is some coverage from our friends at make today Adafruit Cartoon Network and Microsoft join forces to get kids into making all the characters from Cartoon Network Microsoft make code Adafruit hardware getting together and you got to check it out so if you have a circuit playground express plug it in go to make code.adafruit.com we have more projects coming out and JP is going to show you a make code minute now. All right. And we'll have um, some so more you make can code get projects. Inspired yeah. With your we have a bunch of make code projects coming up with Cartoon Network. Probably start next week or so. Yeah. Take it away, JP. Okay. For today's make code minute, what I want to talk about is using the switch built onto the Circuit Playground Express to switch the direction that our NeoPixels are gonna move when we press the button. Uh, so you can see here in my make code session, what I have is on start, I'm setting the pixel color at pixel zero, that's the very first one in the upper left corner there of the board, uh, to red. And then I am creating two variables called my position and the direction. So my position is set to zero. That's going to be used for the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine NeoPixels. And direction is going either counterclockwise or clockwise when it's set to negative one. And you'll see how this works here in a second. Uh, when I press the button B, I just chose the one on the right for fun. When I press the button B on the Circuit Playground Express, it's going to do these things. It's going to set all of the pixels to black, which essentially turns all pixels off. It's a way to clear this, the, uh, the board. Then we're going to uh, change that position that the uh, pixel is on the board, that variable my position, 
by a value of either 1, which means it'll go in this counterclockwise direction, or negative 1, which will go clockwise. Then we set the pixel color at that position, which started out at 0, but now it's going to be 1, if we add 1 to it, to red. So let me show you that first. Let me take a look at my screen so I see what's happening. So what happened? Oh, I'm in the wrong direction. Come back. Okay, so when I press the button, it's going to advance 1 in this direction. And now, looking back at my code, when I move the switch to the left, it changes that direction variable to negative 1. When I move the switch that's built onto the board to the right, it sets the direction to 1. So watch this. It's headed here towards the right. When I flip this switch, now we're subtracting 1 from that position variable every time we press the button. So it's a nice, easy way to change the direction of that NeoPixel with the switch that's built right onto the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. And tune into JP Show tomorrow for another Make Code Minute. I'll also play it next week on the show. All right. Welcome to the world of Python on hardware. Yay, Blinka. Okay. What's going on this week? There's a lot going on. Yeah. This week, Python snakes its way to the SparkFun Spark Mini. CMD21 mm. Mini. That's right. And uh, this is a kind of like a, it's bigger than a trinket. It's maybe about yeah. like it's a bitsy size, and it's from SparkFun. They've made a bunch of cool CMD21 based boards. Um, this is their kind of their cute little one. It's kind of like a Pro Mini, but with a CMD. And um, Sean Heimel, uh, who's been working with us to um, make variant forks for all of the different SAMD21 boards out there, uh, pushed up the definition and tutorial on how to get this board working with CircuitPython. So maybe yep. you have one, want to try it with CircuitPython, it's easy to get started. Check out the guide. All right. And uh, big milestone, we hit 10,000 members, humans. Humans. On Discord. So if you want to go to adafruit.it <laughs> slash Discord or discord.gg slash adafruit, we are there. Um, special thanks to, uh, let me make, I, I screenshotted it right when it happened. Yeah. It was um, Indian, E-N-D-I-N. -N. Indian was the 10,000th? Was 10,000th person. Wow, it really it, Well, that changes because, you know, people come and people go. Yeah. But uh, that's 10,000 people. And uh, the reason why it's so successful because of all of you. Um, code plus community. It's one of the... Um, things that we decided to do. We build our products out in the open. Discord's a place where people help each other and share, and we try to keep it um, a great, safe place for everyone to join. So thanks for making it a cool place, and don't forget, um, we answer questions at the end of this show live. Um, go there as soon as you can. We also uh, wrapped up the Code Plus Community CircuitPython 2019 post, mm -hmm. so um, you can always send something in. You can look for the post, but um, we got a lot of good feedback, and we wanted to know what you wanted to see in CircuitPython in 2019. 19. So thank you, everyone who sent that in, and we have all the blog posts up and more. Um, this is kind of neat. Timothy is uh, going to school for design and worked on this. Um, it's like a final project. Fictional magazine. Yeah. Which um, is. A but is it fiction? Is it? Yeah. Um, this was the world of Circuit Python. So it was a beautiful layout and design. And uh, Timothy wrote in. And he's like, it was great because you have all your photos, all your images, everything up. And I was able to complete this. Uh, magazine design project uh, because of all the resources Adafruit puts out Look there. Look how cool Blinka looks. Yeah, that's oh, cool. Got Dan, Scott, Katney. Yeah. Um, over on Embedded FM, they mentioned CircuitPython. We put that um, in the newsletter. Um, listen to that broadcast, um, not only for CircuitPython, but um, for all the good content that's in there. And then um, this one you wanted to talk about. It's a um, LCD. These are, yes. Yeah. This is the TFT updating with CircuitPython. This is Scott's code that he's been working on to um, write display code for, uh, display support code for CircuitPython. And he took some slow-mo videos. So I think not this one. Yeah, you'll see it in just a you'll second. You'll see it. You can see like the Here refresh comes. rate. Watch it all like go yeah, it's right cool. across the screen. Boom, yeah. see that? So that's actually the slow-mo of the display itself updating. Um, when we write to it. So it actually, like, you can see the chunks of uh, uh, TFT itself updating. Um, that's not like us writing the bug. We write all of it at once, but then only chunks of it update at a time as um, the refresh occurs. So you can see that refresh effect. So very yeah, neat. So I'll be posting this up um, later with more information, but that, that's hot off the press that came in today. Yeah. 
Uh, this is a, a neat circuit Python powered 24 hour clock. Okay. You can see it go back and forth. We have uh, links to that project and more. Huh. So like use the servo and it yeah, takes us from over. zero to... Yeah, it's okay. cool. And then this is from Sophie. This is a preview for her next uh, Hackspace magazine project. Look at this great with, photo. With um, circuit Python. She can write better in light than I can with a pen. <laughs> um, this is kind of neat. Um, kind of a sign of the times. I'm going to play the video. Because the the national parks are closed, someone made a soundboard. With of the national parks. Of <laughs> national parks with all the bird sounds and stuff. So I'm going to just uh, play this. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting time that we're in right now. Um, at least okay. you can build something. Let's hear some nature. Here's a cool grid display. This uses Circuit Python. Oh, it looks like it's got a trinket and some yeah. dot stars, and they're just slowly filling them up with colors. Looks cute. I love this little display. Look at those little pixels. Here's another project. I think this is it's from a clock, and it's got Cake like edge lit. Yeah, you can see yeah. the edge lit LED. So it's like it's a Lixi kind of display. Yep. So that's, that's cool. cool. Um, this is uh, this is a full. Um, it's a pretty long video, so we just have a link to it. Um, Raspberry Pi plus Adafruit Cricket Hat equals robotics. We're trying to use how to uh, learn how to use Circuit Python to easily build robots. JP has an updated guide. Speaking so. of robots, this yeah. is a robot with a Feather M4 on a Cricket. Um, so it takes advantage of the speaker and the sensor inputs and uh, the motor control to make a disk sequencer. So as that disk flips around, four uh, light sensors detect the black squares and play an audio clip. So it's like a little rotating beat machine, and then you just fill in. Uh, the rectangles that you want to play audio. And uh, Hackaday posted up this. It was on Hackaday also on our Learn system. It is a IDE for Android for writing Circuit Python. Um, we also have a, a new project, and we put this in. This is when we just had one skull, and uh, when we built this, we shot a short video. It's a that was me. I sculled it. Yeah, it an <laughs> IoT device that uses Circuit Python M4 ESP32. So um, here's past us talking about it, and uh, we'll show you it live um, after. Uh, after the video. What is this? This is a uh, circuit Python powered display with an ESP32 wired up to it. So this is the ESP32 module breakout. This is a uh, 240 by 320 TFT display. And it's on this PCB here with a Cortex M4. This is the SAMD51 SD card, some extras. And then I just hand wired the ESP32 right now. Yeah, that's the module I'm going to solder on. And this connects to Hackaday I.O. and fetches the number of skulls for this project, which happens to be this project. Yeah. So I can show you the schematic real fast. This is, this is the uh, SAMD51 ESP module. Uh, you got USB here, and it's running CircuitPython, and then there's a display in the back. And then here's the project. It has one like right yeah. now. Oh, people should go and like this project. Yeah. But if you go back here, you'll see there's one like. Yeah. And this is connecting over the ESP32 using AT commands and um, fetching the data from Hacker. You saw I just got the data, parsed out the JSON, and the value is one. One like. So this Needs is using likes. the Hackaday IO API. That's right. Connecting over CircuitPython with an ESP32 friend. Okay. One skull. Okay, well, that was when we first started the project. Since then... This is live. Yeah. And, you have 39 skulls. And you're chat. just You're one skull away from 40. Yeah. And two people started the repos. This was at 762 and not 764. So this is our uh, CircuitPython GitHub repo. We'd love to get to 1,000. Go, if you haven't started it yet, go check out the Adafruit uh, GitHub repo, github.com yeah. slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython, and give us a star, and then this will go up. And the higher the number, the more of the internet that we win. That's the rules. We just want yeah. we well, to win. We're also testing all this stuff. We're so I just put the links in the chat if uh, you're logged into Hackaday.io or if you're uh, logged into your GitHub account. Um, we'll stop back later and see how these are yes. going. Um, but the URLs are on the screens there. We also put those in the chat. Good. Move them right along. Um, this is a really neat Stemma interface. It's a Stemma MIDI. Yeah, this goes with the, the Neo Trellis. Yeah. This is the 
um, so Octo32. Octo, Octopus badge, and it's now working with the NRF52840. Yeah. And what's cool is all the sensors on there, you can see there's like a um, infrared grid uh, sensor. Well, we already have drivers for that in CircuitPython, so you could use this badge in CircuitPython with Bluetooth. This is in our store now, but it's worth mentioning that this is the Pipe Board Color LCD Skin with Resistive Touch, and it looks like and it's going to work with the Pipe Board Yes, D. see, it's got those, those, those new rectangular connectors in the center. Very suspicious. What was up with that? So I, I looked, and it seems to me, that I, don't, I have no proof, but this is my my investigative reporting, that, that plugs into the new generation of the Pi Board that's coming out soon. Yeah. So this was updated ahead of time. Let's see, breaking news. Let's see oh, breaking news, know. breaking news. Sorry. Got to 40. Got to 40 skulls. Yay, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, back to you. Go, go to the GitHub repo and start. Okay, we're going to keep going. We've just got more to do. Back to you. Okay, um, update. This is still making the rounds. Oshpark posted up GrowGuard's giant board, which runs Linux in the form factor of Adafruit Feather. And we merged in the CircuitPython library support into Adafruit Blinka, so this can now yeah. work with all of our CircuitPython libraries. How many libraries do we have again? 125? At least 125. At least. Okay, um, we previewed the Feather E, um, Feather Wing. Should that? Yeah, coming soon. Talked about it last week. Um, we have some photos floating around, but you'll be able to do well, e ink. PCBs, I think, yeah. Them, yeah. So it's a, it's, we're going to have some more e ink in the store, and this is a 2.13 inch e ink display feather wing. It's got some mounting holes. You can plug the yeah. feather into the back. So that's coming to the Python on hardware enthusiasts out there. Um, Nordic, thanks again. They uh, gave me a little bit of an update. They updated their logo, so we updated the poster. This is coming soon. This is our launch poster for Circuit Python 4. When we launch, we'll be um, giving away some of these posters, and also you'll be able to pick one up. Um, also, Invent to Learn, I bought the first edition, and I just bought the second edition. There's 25% oh. more stuff in there. Um, Gary's on Twitter a lot, and we saw that um, he's now included um, Circuit Playground, Make Code, and uh, more. So uh, pick it up if you haven't. It's a good resource for people who want to teach physical computing, or learn. learning, <laughs> um, making, tinkering, tinkering, and engineering in the classroom. Um, some Moo news. Happy Moo Year. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the new version of Moo's out. 1.0.2. Yeah. Um, a couple things that, well, there's a bug fix, of course, there's some micro, uh, bit, micro Python stuff. We've also um, added more Circuit Python boards. We've also added in a generic, like, catch all, like, wildcard for yeah. all Circuit Python boards. ID. Um, we have a mode that lets you work with um, the argon, boron, and xenon as well. Yeah, so you can now also, yeah, if you're installing Circuit Python on particle boards, you can also use that as well. So check that out. Code with dot moo. It's one of the best editors out there. Um, also, um, I wanted to ask you about this graph so you can explain to folks. It's kind of neat. Um, well, okay, first off, let's look at this beautiful graph. Yeah, this is great. This is, yay, and Blinka. We're, do, we're doing this together. Best pals. And uh, we were they both don't have fingers. Yeah, we were talking to. Well, you don't have fingers. Um, so <laughs> we were talking to the folks at Raspberry Pi, Ben, and we got this neat graph. This yes. is kind of cool because we started doing a lot of work to make it easy to run Circuit Python on all sorts of devices, and yes. it looks like it's working out. Yes, and not only do we have CircuitPython running, of course, on microcontrollers like the SAMD21 and the NR52840 in France, but we also have CircuitPython library support for Linux, and it's something that we spent a lot of time the last uh, couple months on. Um, and here's a graph um, from PyWield, which is the PyPI mirror site for Raspberry Pi that pre-compiles a lot of stuff, just makes it easier for people with Raspberry Pi boards to pip. When they pip install, it'll go through PyWheels. That's new within Stretch. And so um, one thing that you'll notice here is that um, starting around May, we started um, updating all of our guides and um, testing all our drivers on Raspberry Pi computers. And so we got a lot more content out there to let people know that they can use our CircuitPython libraries on Raspberry Pi. And so you can see in April, um, the number of people downloading, well, first Blinka appears and um, Blinka starts taking off. And within a you know, month or two, already overtakes Adafruit GPIO, which is our previous library for doing uh, GPIO support on um, Linux boards. And at the top, you know, these are actually not cumulative, by the way. This is month to month. Yeah. So it's it's increasing, and it's actually like that many per month, not just like total number. And at the end there, you see that red line drop a little bit, um, Adafruit GPIO. That's because we, we've removed the, um, we've deprecated, we're deprecating that library, and we've removed that dependency, and we're now using a different platform detection library instead. Um, so um, more and more, I mean, like, this is just a start, only a couple yeah. months of so having really happy with the progress on Blinka, this. and Blinka's working out. And uh, breaking news, 127 libraries. Thank you, Katni, for that. 127. For our, our roving reporter. News. 
Um, we're up to 48. 48 and we're up to skulls and 770. Oh, goodness. Right, so this is really working. This is working. Thank you for helping us test this. 48 okay. skulls. Yeah. 770 stars. Getting there. Okay. Um, we're know. still on the lookout for more people to help us translate the messages from CircuitPython. You can check out our blog post for more. PyCon, that's the event that's coming up in May. We'll probably be doing something pretty cool there. And uh, the awesome list, keeping it updated. You can get all this and go to adafruitdaily.com, sign up for Python on microcontrollers. That is our this Python news for the week. There's a lot going on. Sweet. OK. Time travel, Look back in the world hacker, hackers, makers, artists, and engineers. Um, happy four years, DigiKey and Adafruit. So four years ago to the day-ish, it was the 15th, not the 16th. Um, it's okay. It's a leap year, whatever. DigiKey started um, stocking our stuff. Yay. And it's really worked out. It's one of the biggest partnerships that we do. Um, they help out with uh, not only getting our products to more places around the world, but partnering up with things like Adabox and the IoT video series. So if you want to buy something and um, you don't want to buy it directly from Adafruit, DigiKey, go for it. And thank you, everyone from uh, Dave to Keith to Kevin to uh, David to Jim to everyone that we talk to on a regular basis. Thank you so much, everyone at DigiKey um, that uh, made this partnership. And so they've, been, they've been great partners. I mean, the people who subscribe to Adabox and there's thousands of you out there, um, yeah. DigiKey has been so key to supporting and helping us with the design and manufacturing of and those data boxes and getting cool parts into more them. More recently, um, introducing us to analog devices, and they partnered up with us too. So thank you. Um, okay, help on it. I wanted to go through the jobs board. Just a reminder: um, these three jobs, um, they'll probably go off the fold eventually because they're from like December, um, and we're in January now. So community manager for Hacky Day, club program coordinator for Raspberry Pi, club growth manager. Raspberry Pi. This is all at jobs at adafruit.com. And then this got posted yesterday 3D generalist for Iridium Studios and 3D environmental arts. There are some really cool jobs at jobs at adafruit.com. You can post your skills, or if your company and you're looking for someone, post it up there. We moderate them. We make sure there's nothing weird or scammy or spammy. Um, that's our free service that we're doing for everyone in the maker world. All right. Okay. Um, we're an open source hardware company. It's true. We are. Um, to prove it, we have all these guides and code. Um, we have 1,708 guides. Lady Ada, what are the guides this week? Okay, so um, we've got, oh, a bunch of guides. So we've got the Grand Central Soundboard um, from Mike Barella. So that's a, a five minute project where you take um, a keypad, plug it into a Grand Central and have it play audio in CircuitPython. It's really, really easy. And uh, there's 70 pins on the Grand Central. We think people are going to love this board and use it a lot. Uh, and this is a good first project to do. We also got the, the basic overall guide for the Grand Central, which has the pinout schematics, this lovely rendering of a rotating Grand Central, if you're wondering what it would look like if it was spinning in the darkness of space. Yeah. We've got Noah and Pedro and Brent's um, Adafruit IO Power Time Tracking Cube. Show, show the video. We've got JP's Xbox Adaptive Controller, how to make your own um, adaptive controller connections. Um, check that out. Uh, it's a great video. We, we showed a little bit of it already. Um, but it's powerful for people who want to make interactive um, projects that it's for adaptive controls, but it's also a great wireless adaptive. If you just want to like have games that maybe you play by touching bananas or, or like hitting a hammer, like there's all sorts of cool interactive um, things that you can do with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Um, from uh, Aaron, we've got the uh, Circuit Playground Express Sparkle Skirt, and we've got last week's um, spinning um, disc sequencer, and then the debouncer, and then the cup. So yeah, a couple, four new guides this week. A yeah. um, lot more coming down the pipe. Uh, we had like one week where we had nine guides. Yeah, so. Mike's train. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Okay. Um, we have some made in New York City factory footage. Um, I'm going to play the tester video that you did, um, just real quick, because that counts. Yeah. And I'm going to play that, and then we're going to play some other videos. Cool. This is my new radio bonnet tester, and this radio bonnet has a lower radio OLED and some buttons, and this is how we're testing it. Let's start the test. So it's sending messages, and then it's actually looking for a reply from another lower radio. That's how we test the radio communication. And then once it gets that packet back from this radio, it's like, great, let's test the buttons. So press buttons and that's it. Okay. That's cool. Cool. Coming in the store soon.
Okay, some other ones. Uh, this is kind of neat because you can see something getting 3D printed. What I'm is like, this? I, I'm like, I wonder what this is going to be used for. What is this going to be used what for? Could is this it a be? coconut? What is it? What could it be? What is it? Is it a lamp? Yeah, I don't know. Is it, is it a Hershey's Kiss? Well, the next thing kind of explains what it is. Check it out. It's a lamp. It's a lamp. That's a nice lamp. This one's titled Andy's Desk. And he's got all the LEDs. Yeah. So this one's titled Andy's Phone. Okay. Ding dong. Somebody's calling. That's one of our first uh, phone and demos that we did. We should then, do that in Circuit Python again. Yeah, we should. Some delicious paste. Yum. 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 Well, don't eat this stuff. No, don't eat this. It's actually extremely bad for yeah. you. Made out of metal. And here is what to pick and place machines wake up to or fall asleep to every single night. Okay, 3D printing. No, Pedro. I have a video every single week. This is the latest video. This is the Time Cube project that uh, you mentioned. Take it away. Yes. No, Pedro. Time tracking. Hey, what's up, folks? In this project, we're building a time tracking cube. Flip the cube to switch between tasks so you can automate your timesheets. An accelerometer tracks orientation and NeoPixels light up each task. Use Adafruit I.O. to log data into a feed and store timestamps of each task. Set up triggers in Zapier and create an action to update a Google spreadsheet. Get the Adafruit Feather Huzzah and start building your IoT projects. The Feather format is easy to use and gives you tons of add-ons. The Prop Maker Wing adds NeoPixel support and sound effects. The Arduino code shows how to use Adafruit I.O. and set up your IoT projects. Use the Adafruit libraries and example code to get you started. The cube uses SnapFit panels so it's easy to assemble and you can swap out different parts. We use dual extrusion 3D printing to create a frame in two colors so the LEDs illuminate the frame. The design is open to remix so the parts can be modified. Use matching headers to install the prop maker wing. The panels are press fitted into the frame and can have different icons for each task. Check out the learn guide for code, files, and documentation on building this project. I think this could also be made into a game or maybe even a custom interface for assistive tech. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. And you always wanted a toothpick dispenser. I need one because so my toothpicks are let, everywhere. It's a higgledy biggledy. It's, let's, uh, it's out of control, let's toothpicks. Print one out fast. Okay, great. Good. Okay, and don't forget every Wednesday, 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro. Uh, before we go over to new products, code is crystals, 10% off and new for store all the way up to 11.59 tonight or until I remember to turn off code. Ready, okay. Ada? Yep. All right, let's do this. Okay, first, first up, up, we've got this little thing. This is... That's it tonight? Yeah, Christmas. that's it. That's all we got. Now, this is actually... Um, Scott requested this, and he's right. This is a pretty useful thing. This is a compact SWD connector. Um, it's a 0.05-inch pitch connector with uh, 10 pins, 5 double row. And um, we have these on a bunch of boards, but this particular version... Actually, I'll, I'll show what it, um, what the previous version looks like. It's, it's kind of useful to see. So, this... This is what most connectors look like for SWD, and you see there's a box all the way around it. But if you're making a very compact board, you might not want to have like that full shroud. This has a key, but it's not fully shrouded. Um, so it works just the same place, and then as long as you know you 
uh, need a compact build and maybe you want to put some components around it um, and you don't get in the way of the shroud, then you know you can use this. But it's it's handy for doing DIYing your own boards that need SWD connector. Next up. Next up, we've got this um, slightly longer than usual pin uh, female header. It's a two by twenty connector, and so the way this works is you can plug this into a Raspberry Pi and it lifts up like a bonnet uh, that you've connected. Actually, I can I can show it on. Um, on a live Pi, so hold on. This Pi, I can, I can disconnect this for now. So let's go to the overhead and I can, oof, hold on, unplug this and I can show this off real fast. So we've got here like a normal Raspberry Pi with a bonnet and you'll see we use these nice skinny connections um, for connecting a bonnet, but sometimes you're like, well, I need more space or more clearance. So what you do is, you plug this on and this gives you that extra eight and a half millimeters of height and then these pins are just long enough that you know they can go into another socket header so they're kind of like stacking headers but for only like one item at a time and then of course you know if you're using this and maybe you want to like stick a battery in between here or maybe you just need more clearance um, it works just the same but it's a little bit taller so it's like kind of a lifter All right, next up we've got this uh, NTAG203 bracelet. We've had these with MyFair Classic compatible chips. Uh, this is an NTAG203 chip. Um, it's the same kind of bracelet. It, you know, it's, it's stretchy, you can just fit it over your hand. Um, but in that little round part is an NTAG203 with uh, 144 bytes of memory. And it can be read or write from pretty much every modern phone. It's an RFID NFC tag. Okay. Okay, next up is, well, I can't remember the part number. This is the RCWL. Six, 1601, yeah. So this is an HC SR04 compatible sonar like a uh, distance sensor, but the nice thing about this one is it's the same price but runs on three volts. So I'll show it off with a feather. Basically do this demo. So uh, I've got this feather here. Let me plug it into a battery. And what's nice is with the HC SR04, um, you know, you, you have it powered over five volts and then the, the data out is five volts. So you have to use a resistor divider. Um, really annoying. Um, with this version, it runs just fine over three volts or five volts. And you see it's just wired up directly to two GPIO pins. Uh, we've got code for this in MakeCode, CircuitPython, Arduino. It works just like those standard uh, HC SR04 sensors, but it's three volt compatible or five volts. So we carry both, but chances are like, I think you just get this one because it works better across the board for everything. Okay, next up. Mm. We've got the version two of the um, Raspberry Pi powered Google AIY audio kit. So it's a DIY kit. You see here, it comes in a box. Um, with, oh, can you go back? I'll just, we'll, we'll talk about all the components, uh, uh, two forward. So it comes with a speaker, it comes with a fully assembled Raspberry Pi, it comes with a fully assembled bonnet, button, USB cable, cardboard, connectors, SD card. It basically has everything. Like it used to be you would get it minus the Raspberry Pi and you had to include it and then maybe there was some soldering. Now this is all in one. Um, so you don't have to pick up anything else. Uh, you can even just power it from a, you know, any USB port. Although if you get a power supply, then you can, um, you know, plug it in wherever you want in the house. Um, it's got a nice big speaker, RGB button. They've simplified it. They've lowered the cost, but it's still um, the same basic AIY voice kit, just better. And uh, you can put it together in a couple hours and you can even configure it over an Android phone. So um, uh, some, sorry, let me clear this up. Um, some instructions, um, you know, if you, if you want to, you can build it and um, SSH in to control it. And like the instructions include information on how to do that. But if you have an Android phone, we found that you can actually just set it up, um, like I think using Bluetooth or something. And it, it, you can set up the SSID and configure it. And then when you turn it on, um, so this is it, and you can see there's a Raspberry Pi inside here and you plug into the back and there's GPIO for like hackers and audio if you want external audio. But um, there's the button and so I can press it and ask a question. What, what, should, what should I ask the Google? The weather. Is the weather? Yeah. Okay. Hey Google, what's the weather in New York? Right now in New York City, New York, it's 38 and clear. Yeah. And tonight, it's predicted to be 36 and clear. So you can build your very own Ask Google AIY kit. And what I really like about this is, um, unlike some devices that listen all the time, 
you can set it up so that it only works when you press the button. So it's, it's you know, you can make it so it doesn't, but I think it's better if you press the button and yeah. then, you know, it doesn't listen to you all the time and it can answer questions only when you want. So, um, yes, this is a version two. The older version has been discontinued. Um, if you've ever wanted one of these, pick it up. It's easier than ever and less expensive to put one together than before. Next up. Next up, we have the NRF51822 module. Um, K-Town was asking, like, oh, can you send me some modules? And I realized, oh, you know, we don't have these in the store. It's a good idea. We use these in our feather boards, in our Blue Fruit Shield. Um, it's a Cortex-M0 with a Bluetooth radio, I think 256K of flash, 32K of RAM. Has a bunch of peripherals, and then you can program it using Nordic's SDK. There is also support for it in MicroPython because it's the same chip as the MicroBit, and there's also an Arduino core that you can install to use it. But these chips come blank, and I want to make that super clear. They don't come with a bootloader. They don't come with any code on them. They come like this, um, and then you solder it onto your PCB. You can check out our open source designs, and you can you know recycle those and reuse them as, as desired. Um, but you will need to use a J-Link or something to program it. Um, but it's a really nice module. We like them. Um, they've got uh, great range. Um, they're FCC, CE, Telic uh, authorized already, certified already. They've got an antenna. They've got all the stuff in the module. And they're not too hard to hand solder either. Either. So if you want, you can um, put this onto your next design and add Bluetooth. OK. I like to call these magneto bandages. Yeah, these bandages. Bandages for magneto. Um, but, uh, it's neat. It's a way to see magnets. Yeah, we you saw a video online. And I yeah. was like, this is so cool. We we have this is handy if you want to know where magnets are inside something. Yeah, so this is high density magnet film, and I remember having you know I I think I got a piece of this from like Radio Shack in like the '90s, but it was like kind of crummy. Well, this is like really nice version of that yeah. magnetic film. So we picked up a couple pieces. Um, they're laminated, um, so they're protected because the film is it's got this like slurry of ferromagnetic components in it. Okay. Um, so this is what it looks like, and it's, it's laminated to get a small piece. And then, like, for example, an iPad, there's all these magnets along here that normally you can't see. But when you put this magnet film on top, yeah. um, they appear. So you can use this to see um, where, are the magnets? where are the, magnets. are the magnets. And, and it has this really cool like, effect. Like it's, it's a kind of a green color and then black where there's magnets. Um, if you want to, like, peek into stuff, um, you know, less, less visible but still somewhat visible. There's a speaker. Yeah. Not so much. The, these magnets are really strong, so you can see them. But if you have, like, buckyballs, these are also really fun because you can, like, put these underneath to play with. But um, we thought this magnet film is neat. And, yeah, it'll, it'll detect any magnetic surface. What we should do is actually um, maybe get an electromagnet and then see how that so appears that as well. But, yeah, so these little pieces are, like, you know, maybe 40 by 50 millimeters. And um, really fun. Yeah. Okay. Crystals. You wonder why the code is crystals. Yeah. These are crystals. These are actually pretty special crystals. It took me actually a, a bit of time to find. Um, these are no foil back SS16 crystals. Um, they're, they're crystals just like you see on like jewelry or, or clothing or bags or cell phones or whatever, but they don't have foil on the back, which means that light can shine through them. They've got like a rainbowy effect to them. So you can see that's, uh, you know, white light. It does have a rainbow um, kind of diffusion. And what we got these for in particular is you can glue them onto NeoPixels, and then they have this like really cool crystally effect. So glue them on with just some super glue or... Um, you know, like E6000 or whatever. And maybe I'll zoom in. Although that photo we have is really good. So they add a little bit more shimmer. And then of course, when um, they're unplugged, they also have a little bit of, of glitter to them. So if you have something with NeoPixels, maybe like a wearable, you can um, glue these crystals on top. It's really fast and easy. And then even when the LEDs are off, they will kind of shimmer and shine and reflect light. And then when you have them on, especially from the side, um, yeah. you get a really cool kind of like diffused crystally effect. So these come in um, a pack of a hundred. So you get a lot. Um, so they're low cost, and then you can, I mean, you can use them for other stuff, but we particularly got these because they fit really nicely on top of NeoPixels. Here they're being used with 33.5 millimeter NeoPixels, but they'll work um, equally good on 5 millimeter because the center part is the same size. So yeah, just glue them on top and, and bedazzle your NeoPixels with LEDs. Okay, and the start of the show tonight, besides 
our community new Lady Ada is Radio Bonnet. Radio Bonnet. Part of our Radio Fruit this series is, of products. That's right. Ever since we acquired Radio Shack, we've been really <laughs> yeah. going full Radio full throttle on the Radio Fruit. Um, so this is the first of four bonnets, like we've had with the Feather Wings and Feathers. We're going to have four total, and this is, I think, the most popular ones we did at first. This is a Laura 900 megahertz radio on a bonnet, um, and we've got some antenna options. And then on the right, we've got an OLED and three buttons. So um, we've got some example code here, and we'll, we'll, we're about to publish a guide for how to use this with Laura WAN. So you can use this either as a Laura client, which is easiest, so it sends data to a Laura gateway. Of course, you can use it as um, just a plain, sorry, it can be used as a Laura WAN client, so it can send data to a Laura WAN gateway. Um, like we have the Things Network gateway in the shop, which is a, a great gateway we recommend. You can use this as a bi-directional LoRa communication. If you don't want to use LoRaWAN, you can just send data to other um, radios that use the RFM 9X, like our Feather or Breakout. Um, or you can use it as a single channel LoRa to internet gateway. Single channel gateways are not like the best because you have to make sure that your client also knows about that single channel, but this absolutely will work with a Pi Zero or you can use it with a Pi Three, of course. And then over here we have a 128 by 32 OLED because we had all the space left over. And so, you know, especially when you're doing radio stuff, getting information and feedback, like what's the signal strength and how many packets have you sent and did you drop any, um, that's really essential. So we stuck a little OLED over here and then we have three buttons connected to GPIO. So for example, if I press this leftmost button, it sends a packet to the Things Network. And if you look at our um, Adafruit Things Network page, you can see some data popping in. So this might be nicely paired with some sensors. You know, you can connect to these pins to add I2C sensors if you want. And we've got Python code for this. And then over here, you can connect a UFL antenna, or you can just solder in a wire. Honestly, a wire works really well. Um, and we've done a lot of experiments with this radio set, and the lower radios can go a couple kilometers, even in a city. And then, of course, if you're outside and you're doing, you know, in, in an area without a lot of buildings, um, we've seen multiple kilometer distances. You know, I think the record is like maybe 40 or 50 kilometers that you can get with a, a tuned antenna, a directional antenna. So this is designed for the Raspberry Pi. Um, we've got code. Uh, for it, for use with LoRa, LoRaWAN, or just as like a radio sending it back and forth. Um, and you can use these with our feathers or breakouts on the other side. So you can, you can have like a feather network that's sending data through a Raspberry Pi that then sends it up, you know, through the internet to the cloud or something. Um, because, you know, the feathers are little battery powered ones and this one would be plugged into a Raspberry Pi connected to the wall. So this is the first of our Radio Fruit Bonnets. And that's new products. Recap. Yep. New, 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 new. We've got this very compact J, uh, SWD connector. It's a two by five connector uh, with a key, but not a big shroud. We've got this two by 20 uh, lifter header. It's like a two by 20 female socket header, but it has pins that are the same length of male header. So it kind of acts as like an extender. This um, rubbery bracelet has an NTAG 203 RFID NFC tag inside of it that can be used by most modern phones and you can just slip it on. Um, this RCWL1601 is an ultrasonic sonar distance sensor. It's back compatible with the HCSR04, but it also works with three volts or five volts. So it's a great replacement for HCSR04s when using modern microcontrollers or computers. The version two of the Google AIY audio kit now comes all fully assembled with a Raspberry Pi that's pre-soldered, uh, SD card, power supply, every, uh, USB for powering it, everything you need. Uh, it's a great build to make your own open source, hackable audio assistant. This is just a module with the NRF51822, great for people who want to add Bluetooth or energy to their projects. Um, the Nordic chips are great. This is a low cost one um, that you can find support for with MicroPython and Arduino or the Nordic SDK. This magnet film lets you th see magnets. So, you know, for example, this iPad, you can see the magnets on the edge of the iPad. Um, it's got a really cool like black effect when there's a magnetic field. Um, and this is the high density film. So it looks better than that old film that you might remember from your youth. These crystals don't have a foil backing on them, but they still refract light. And they're the perfect size for gluing on top of NeoPixels or LEDs to make your NeoPixels project bling out. Get them in a pack of 100, so even if you lose a couple, you're good to go. 
The LoRa bonnet for Raspberry Pi plugs into your Raspberry Pi Zero or Pi Three or any Raspberry Pi with a two x twenty header. Gives you an RFM nine X LoRa LoRaWAN compatible radio that you can attach an antenna to. Also gives you an OLED display and three buttons so you can connect an antenna and then send data to, through a radio um, or from a radio to the internet or make your own LoRaWAN gateway, whatever you like. Um, add radio capabilities to your Raspberry Pi. That's new products. Okay. And don't forget the code is crystals. Crystals. 10% off. Why? Store. Well, yeah, crystals. Okay. I told you why. That's crystals. Um, okay. Let's do a quick top secret, which we already showed, but I wanted to uh, talk about this a little bit. Yeah. This is, uh, I can show the front and back. So this is, this is where we were at earlier today. This was. 762, but we're yeah. way better now. So here it is live. If you want to. Um, 773. See it, up, see it update live. Do you want to see the skulls? Yeah, we can see how the Hackaday one's You're doing. You're up to 50 skulls. Yeah, so this is this board I'm designing, which is this incredibly bright LED for some reason. Um, so it's using an ESP32 as a coprocessor to a SAMD51. And it's got a display. Scott has been working on some display I.O. stuff. Um, but you can power it, and then it can connect to the Internet through the ESP32, but you're still writing all the code in CircuitPython, and you can drag and drop files. So this background image is just a bitmap that you made. You drag it on, and then this is a font. And one of the cool things that Scott did with fonts is we're just using BDF, which is like this old X11 Linux font format that's like, it's all ASCII text, so you can parse it in Python. And then um, this is the GitHub font, which is called Collegiate. So I downloaded it, created a bitmap font for it, and then it's printing out the number of stars we have on our GitHub circuit Python repo, so up to 773. So yeah. if more people hit star, this will go up. And yeah. up is good, more is good. You want more stars. Okay, so that's a uh, top secret for now. All right, let's answer some questions in the chat. There was a couple yeah. already. Um, Bruin? Yeah. Okay, check what's the questions. Yeah, well, let me just remind folks, don't forget, if you want your questions asked, go to adafruit.it slash discord. We were oh, 775. 775, 775. Oh, really? Yeah, so. Ding, 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 ding. Two you. more. Thank you. Bing bong. Boom. Okay. Um, okay. Looks like, uh, what was the distance for the lower WAN stuff? It really depends on the this, this setup you have. Um, I don't want to promise anything. In the city, which is where we are, we got up to a, you know two kilometers. Um, when that's like, you know, it's bouncing off of stuff and using a, you know, a good antenna. If you use directional antennas and you have like a good point-to-point -point link, you can do, I think, like 30 or 40 kilometers. I think it's linked off of um, our product pages for the, the LoRa, but that's, that's well without out beyond the spec. And it, it's kind of suggested two to five kilometers is what you're going to get. Okay. It's definitely going to be further than the RFM69. Uh, I think it's like two or three times as far as this. So that you're, you do have to spend a little bit more for the LoRa chipset, but it does work quite well. Okay, this was from Bill earlier. Uh, the BN0055 uh, seems to switch modes as it gets and loses calibration. I think this is normal. Is there any way to get it to stay in relative mode when it gets lose the North Pole signal? It jumps around. Yeah, I am user hard. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, the library we have just queries that signal out from the chip. With actually, that processing is done in chip. Um, resetting it once in a while might help. So I suggest. Next up, um, a while ago when Grand Central was still in the vault, I think Lady A mentioned that the header block at the end was pinned out to match the OV7670 camera module for PCC. Did that make it into the final design? Yes, it is. The, that header did not change. I'll say it's not a plug-in completely. It's not a perfect plug-in design because I think the power pins didn't quite match up, um, but it's very close. So um, you can quite easily connect an OV7670. And we have some code in GitHub. It's not public, but it's called like m4 camera viewer or something and you can try it out okay uh let's see do, 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 do. that's those are all the questions okay what do you want to give away this week cool well i thought we'd give away one of these aiy voice kits really that's yeah. a good giveaway i think so because i'll tell you why the laura bonnet you need two yeah and i don't you know i don't want to get give one somebody if they can't use it but, but um the aiy kit i think is a great kit even if you have one give it away it's fun to build okay well what are the rules for the trivia the rules are if you've won something before you can't win again only one winner per my lifetime the first person to call the phone number 
that we're going to have on the screen and ring this phone and um, when I pick up, answer the magical question, which is what's your name and where are you calling from, yeah. will uh, win this fabulous prize. I'm going to pick up the phone and say ahoy ahoy and that's how you know it's me. So call this number, it's going to ring twice, I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to say ahoy ahoy and then you're going to say ahoy ahoy and I'm going to say please turn down your computer audio so you don't get echo effects and then um, I'm going to ask you your name, uh, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on. And then I'm going to give you this AIY voice kit, which is amazing. Hey Google, are you amazing? Great. <laughs> See? Great. Oh, it's ringing. It's ringing. It's happening. Can you pick it up? Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, please turn down your computer audio and tell me your name where you're calling from. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm calling from Placentia, California. Hey, Anthony from California. Well, congratulations. You were able to call a phone number and answer some questions, and so you're going to win uh, a Google AIY kit. What? Yay. Oh, cool. Yay. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Um, well, there's actually a few projects, but Ooh. let me ask my wife what she's most interested okay. in. Okay. Yeah, let's ask uh, her. What are you most interested in? Projects to work on. Tell her that I teach microbit. Uh, oh, she teaches microbit. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, All right. That's cool. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, well, we got lots of microbit stuff that you can build and some, some projects coming out. Check out my code, uh -huh. uh, make code and uh, you got MicroPython stuff, too. Well, we're going to send you out this kit, and you can build it and maybe hack it, connect a micro bit to it. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com, uh -huh. and say, hey, it's Anthony from California, and I <laughs> won a product number 4080, 4080, and they'll get that out to you. Yeah, that's right. Got it. And uh, don't forget, uh, come on by with your projects to show and tell. And next week, if your wife calls in, she can win something because it's per person, not per household. So she can she can win something uh, too. Yeah. Okay. So get I'll her to. Her but you can't dial it. She has to dial it. Just the rules. Yeah, she'll dial. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you, Anthony. Have a wonderful yeah, night. Honor. Congratulations. <laughs> it's, ex it's really exciting there at that house. Yeah. Have a great night and uh, build something cool with some micro bits. Yeah, we will. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Good night. All right. She was more happy than Anthony. I That's can cool tell. She was, she was excited. Winning's fun. Winning is fun. Okay. All right. Congratulations. They win. All right. Boys kit. Okay. Well, that's the show tonight, everybody. Coach Crystals, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, you can hang out in the chats and more, help each other out. And uh, we'll be back here next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We also have GP show tomorrow. Um, special thanks to all the Adafruit community members, all the Adafruit remote team members, and more. And, of course, all the Adafruit team members who run the Adafruits who keep this place going. Um, thanks if you're picking up a kit or uh, sharing a link or even starring our GitHubs. Let's see what we're up to right now before we go. Oh, wait, sorry. It's all right. I forgot. 777. Seven, seven. That's pretty lucky. That's a so, very lucky number. So thank you, everybody. But uh, go to github.com slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython and start. We'll have this running all night. Um, we'll be looking at it, and uh, we appreciate the stars and more. Good stars. So. Wait, see skulls. Skulls are still 50. The skulls are 50. Still 50. All right. Well, we'll take a look at that. This is on hackaday.io. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, here is your moment of Zener. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>